Saints. Praise the Lord, Saints. God is good. For this is today that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Pam, why do we love God? Because he first loved us. Amen. Because he first loved us. If it wasn't for God loving us, we wouldn't be loving him. Amen. Amen. He's an awesome God. He's a glorious God. And he's God of gods. Welcome to the Tabernacle Trinity Hall. Praise God. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And Pam, how have your day been today? It's been a very busy day for good. How about you? Amen. Blessed day. Blessful day, busy day, a good day. Praise God. A day to rejoice in. Amen. Amen. A day to be glad in. Amen. Amen. He's an awesome God. Yes, he is. Guys, how have your days been out there? How have your day been today? Praise God. He's an awesome God. Guys, we are now on what? Who is God? We want to be on who is God for a while, guys. Guys, remember, we're covering at least three um, attributes, or uh, Pam would say attributes, attributes. amen, uh, on God, amen. You get used to saying things a certain way, and it stays with you. It don't want to tear from you. But um, attributes, so we are talking about the first attribute, we're talking about God the initiator. So we're going to finish that up, and we're going to get into... The sovereign, God, sovereign. He is sovereign. And we're going to end it with love. God is the love. So we are moving now from initiative to sovereign. Amen? Amen. And of course, us being in our finite minds, you know that we can't think of everything it is to be thinking about of God who is infinite. Amen? Amen. So you guys out there too, what are your thoughts? Who is God? How would you define God? How do you define who God is? Remember I said, if you ask a hundred different people to describe who God is, you'll get 100 different answers. Amen? And you might even get some similarities in there, but it will be something that everybody will have to say that is different from somebody else because God is, I am that I am, whatever you need him to be. I, I don't know what that is in your life, but I know in my life that he's a what? Deliverer. Amen. 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 And he's a sustainer. Amen. Amen. And he's because he keeps us. Amen. 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 And he deliver us. He's an e initiator. Amen. Amen. And he's sovereign. Because he does what he wants, and he is love. Also, you know, God is so 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 awesome. He's righteous. He's just. He's faithful. Amen. Mm -hmm. He's a friend. Mm -hmm. So what is God? Who is God? Who is God, guys? Who is God? You know, it, don't, it, it don't take me to tell you who God is, but it does take me to tell you what God means to me, what my experience, what our experience is. Amen. Amen. Pam, I'm going to ask Pam, Pam, who is God? Amen. To you. He is my Lord and Savior. He is the creator of me. Amen. So he's a creator. He's Lord and he's Savior. He's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. He's an awesome God. He's yes, awesome he is. is what he is. He's that too. Amen. So, guys, we are going out of talking about the initiator, but getting out of talking about him being the initiator, we got we start talking about God sent his son, who in turn sent the Holy Ghost by the Father. Amen. Amen. And so God, he initiate, he supply all our needs. Amen. Amen. Even before we know what those needs are. Amen. Amen. So when I was out in the world, being of the world, God was already setting things up and protecting me and supplying my needs through the Holy Spirit, even when I had no idea whatsoever. Amen. Amen. So it's God who makes us because he know us. Amen. We can't make ourselves. 
We cannot save ourselves. There's no such thing as self-salvation. Amen. Amen. You can't save yourself. As a matter of fact, he who saves his own life loses his life. Amen. Amen. But he who gives up his life saves his life. But what are you talking about? Well, are you giving up your life for God? For God. To live for God. To witness for God. To be a vehicle for God. Amen. Amen. To be a vessel for God. Is that what you're doing? Or are you out there, what you call yourself, being self-made? I'm self-made. I have a mansion. I have this. I have 10 cars. I do this. I got this in the bank. I got that in the bank. And you might even be helping other people. But which one are you serving? Are you serving God or are you serving your greenback? Amen? Now, I'm not saying that you can't have greenback. I'm not saying that you can't have mammon. But what I'm saying is you can't serve both. One has to be in front of the other. So what are you being a faithful steward over? If you have money, are you investing in the things that are of God? Helping the children, if you are a child, your sister and brothers, to get the word, to get the message out, supporting your covenant. Do you have a covenant? Are you in a church, you know, with a roof and four walls and a floor? Do you have a covenant, a, 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 a group of people that you come together with for fellowship, for worship, for testimony? Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about, of course, you have us, you're looking at us. And we all, sisters and brothers, one to or other, been under the blood of Jesus. Amen? But we also have to have a place, the word say not to forsake the assembly being gathered together as the manner of such is. But as you see the day approach to exhort one and another so much the more. And see, a lot of times you might think that you're battling something, nobody but you. Then you get in a group of people and you find out, wow, somebody else, this must be natural because everybody is talking about the same thing that I thought that I was experiencing all by myself. And so what does that do when you gather together as an assembly? It encourages you. Amen, Pam? Well, it strengthens your faith. And it also helps you, give you a better perspective of what you could be, go you know, could be going through that somebody else can give you um, some encouragement on if they've been through it. Amen. So you'll see that because they got through it, God got them through it, then surely he'll get me through it. And sometimes they can show you how to get through something. Because when you're going through something, it don't look like you want to get through it because you can't see what's on the other side of it. Amen? Amen. Especially when you're going through it for the first time. Especially when you're young and you don't understand nothing yet. And you're getting understanding. Being a babe in Christ, you're young in Christ, or either being a babe not being in Christ. You're still going through something. When you go through something without understanding, it means because you haven't been through it before. But when you go through it with God for the first time, you'll find that you can have strength while you're going through it. Amen? Amen. He'll feed you. It's like me telling you, okay, guys, you're going to have a test tomorrow, but don't worry about it. It's an open book test. And it's going to be between pages 1 and 10. That just made it a lot easier for you. Amen? Amen. That's how it is when we come together in fellowship with one and another. Amen? Amen? When we are going through something, somebody say, God say, okay, I'm going to lay it out for you. I'm going to give you an open book lesson so that you can have an open book test. So while you're going through what you're going through, I'm going to show you how I'm going to get you through this through somebody who already been through this. Amen? Amen. And so that's how we encourage one and another. That's how we build each other up. That's why the words say to exhort the other to be higher than yourself, to esteem the other to be higher than yourself. Because 
whenever you're helping somebody else, then you're not being selfish. You're being selfless. And because of that, God will bless you. Amen. Amen. It's better to give than to receive. But sometimes receiving is allowing somebody to give. So you're giving also, even though you're receiving. Amen. So, yes, it can work vice versa within, intertwined, in between. Amen. God is awesome God because he's an all-knowing God. Amen. So, the Holy Ghost initiates in God's children the things that are of God. I think sometimes that we as believers don't yield and give thought to the um, activity and the commission that the Holy Spirit has for us. Amen. Jesus said that when he left that he would send us a comforter, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I think a lot of times we forget that he lives inside of us. Amen. He lives inside the temple that we're in, that we're oh. walking with every day. Yes. So we need to take heed to his direction, his prompting, because it's him that's doing it. Amen. And he's hearing it from the, the Lord through the Father. Amen. And real speaking, what the Holy Spirit put in us to say. Amen. So what the Holy Spirit here, Jesus didn't speak except that what he heard the Father Father. tell him to speak. Amen. Amen. And the Holy Spirit does the same thing. Amen. Amen. But we are learning how to do that. We don't know how to do that. Amen. So the Spirit, the the, the kingdom of God in the Spirit, in the spiritual, resides within us because of the Holy Spirit. So in us, the kingdom of God is residing in the spiritual realm. Within our physical means. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Because God, his physical kingdom is in heaven. Amen. He's an awesome God. So we got two different things. We're talking about the kingdom of God. And where is the kingdom of God? It's in heaven. So what is the kingdom of God? It's his system. It's the system. How God rules his kingdom is the kingdom of God, the system. Just like we have a system here on earth with the law. We have the, the executive powers, the legislative power. We have the, um, the, um, the, 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 the um, execution, the executioners of the powers. Amen. So you have your laws, your lawmakers, your judges. You have the police. Amen. And then we have the abiding citizens. Amen. That is like a kingdom. That's the system of the United States of America, of the USA. And so God prepares us for his kingdom in this system, the system for the kingdom of God through his Holy Spirit so that when we go to heaven, it won't be no surprise to us. We will already know how to act. Amen. Amen, because this is a dress rehearsal yes. for what we're I'm going to Amen. We're going to be the bride to Jesus. Yes, yes. We are the church, so we we're the bride. We are the church. We're in preparation. That's the word I'm looking we for. We are being prepared. Amen. We are the children. We are children being prepared. Just like we prepare our children to go out into the world, we are being prepared to enter into to the, the kingdom, kingdom of God. God. Amen. Amen. He's an awesome God. Yes, he is. We love him because he first loved us. Amen. Amen. Yes, he is preparing us to enter into the kingdom by making us, he's system, systematically preparing us, amen, for his kingdom. But who you are, you are who you are. Amen. And that's why you should pray every day that you are of God. Because you are who you are. You don't know what tomorrow is bringing. You know who you are today. You don't know what you're going to do tomorrow. You know that the promise of God saying, you know, that no one shall pluck you from my hands. So because of the promise and because I believe I'm walking in God today, when I compare myself to the fruit that is being 
manifested through me, then by the word of God, I can say, if God bless me to see tomorrow, that I will still remain to be a child of God. Amen. Amen. I'm a child of God. You're under the blood. You're not going nowhere. He can't let you go nowhere. He's not going to let you go nowhere. But he is chastising you. And there's a saying, a hard head makes a soft but, amen. Well, growing is not easy. Growing pains is, it's painful sometimes. But if you it have, hurts. if you have the desire to want to live this life for Him, you yield. As yes. painful as it may be, you still yield because we all are growing into the likeness yes. of Him. Yes, you will, amen. You will that, and there is a hurt that is there because think of um Jacob. When Jacob was told that his baby son was dead. And think of how his heart probably just stopped. And when they came back and told him that that um Joseph was still living, his heart stopped because he was shocked to hear. He didn't know if they was messing with him after all what I've been through, y'all coming back, joking me like this, and then him having to live every day from when Joseph he thought he was dead. And then when they came back and said he was alive, he still wasn't sure mm -hmm. until he saw Joseph with his own eyes. Can you imagine what that feels like when somebody hurts your heart like that? That is, a, you know, you know what I'm saying? Right, because he, he, he thought he was gone. He thought he had died. He thought yes. that the um, animals had ate him up when they... You know, brought back the coat with the blood. Yes. So he really thought that he was going in for them to say that he's alive. That's something to take. Yes. Wait a minute. Yes. In my mind, he's been dead yeah. for all these years. And of course, he had to find out the truth when he found out Joseph was alive. Okay, I know now, you know, you guys, y'all lied to me, you know, what was going on. But you know what? That's just like a father. God is just so faithful that he will not stop loving you. He will not stop loving you. Just like Jacob never stopped loving his sons. Amen. Sure Glory to God. He's an awesome God. Awesome. So, yes, he is. So, the Holy Ghost initiates in God's children the things that are of God. He works in us all things and reveals to us Jesus. Hallelujah. Remember, the Holy Spirit ministry is the ministry of sanctification. Jesus himself don't tell us about him. The Holy Spirit teaches us the things that are of Jesus. Amen. The Holy Spirit teaches us the things that are of God. Amen. The Holy Spirit teaches us even the things that are of ourselves. Amen. Amen. And the Holy Spirit teaches us the things that are of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He does all of that. That's God being the initiator. Amen. The Holy Ghost empowers us to, to speak of the things of the Lord that Jesus is the Son of God and came in the flesh and died for our sins. So if you one of those said that you came up, you used to be a Christian, but you're not now, then you're no longer fit for the kingdom of God. You're not fit. And you say, well, what if you're following the Lord, and then you die, and you find out that you did it all for nothing. Well, I say this. What if you died and you found out that you should have did it? And that if you did find out that you did it for nothing, then what would you have to lose? Amen? Because living a Christian life is a beautiful life and a blessed life to live. Amen. It's it's not something that you've been forced to do. You are who you are. And I and I challenge you to to ask God to reveal Himself to you because Amen. God is real. He's a revealer, and He will reveal Himself to you because He's a loving God, and all He wants us to do is love Him back. Amen. And here's the thing: you don't have to believe in Him to ask Him that. And He, when you ask Him, He will reveal Himself to you. And he will still leave the choice up to you. It's still because walking as a Christian is not being forced 
to do anything. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's a daily choice every day. He wants you to choose that you want to live for him. Only in him can you be free. Amen. If you're not in Christ, you're not free because you have no choice but to abide by the things that you are enslaved to abide by. The flesh is not sinful, but it's weak. Your nature, get this, sin and your nature are two different things. But because of the sin of Adam, it opened the doorway so that sin could enter into your nature and corrupt who you are. Where is your heart? Where is your life? Where is your belief? It's in your heart. It's your heart. Sin attacks your heart. And what follows your heart? Your head. Your mind. That's why God had to give you a clean heart. That's why he had to give you a renewed mind. But first, he cleans your house. Your heart. That's your house. He does that through the blood of his son. He washes away your sin and he cleanses your heart. He gives you a new, a renewing mind. Amen. Unique. You got to remember that we're spiritual beings. We're Amen. We're made in the image of God and God is a spirit. So sometimes you have to refocus your mind and realize that this natural state is not eternal. Amen. Spiritual life is. Amen. So you're going to, because life is God. So either you're going to live spiritually with him or away from him. And you are who you are. Even Paul would say, you know, the sin that I do is not I that sin, but it's the sin that's in me. Because you are in the body. You are in a flesh made by man. That's why God's going to make us a body not made by man, but by the heavens, amen, and then we shall surely be, let us make image, let us, let us make man in our image. There was a disagreement there. So God made us in his image instead. And so when we read the word, it says, and I saw appearance as if it was a man from head to feet, but it was a fiery frame. It was a, not a fleshly frame. A fiery body, not a fleshly body. Amen. So, yes, because God created us, we seek him spiritually because he blew his breath in us. So our spirit yearns to be connected back to God. Amen. Amen. And we can only do that through the blood of Jesus. So, hey, trial. And if you die, and if there ain't no such thing as them, well then you got nothing to lose. But if you die, and if he do exist, then the wages of sin is what, pal? And death. And the gift of God is what, pal? Eternal life. Praise God. And so those that believe speak of the things that are of God because we have the Spirit of God in us. That's how you try the Spirit by the Spirit. You know the man's heart. You, li you, you listen to what they are saying. You're looking at what they are doing. Amen. And so because if I'm not of God, I can't talk to you with the love that I'm speaking to you with about the things that are of God. Amen. He, he said you will know minds by the fruit they bear. Glory and to God. And the fruit of the Spirit is mentioned many times that we've read in Galatians. Glory. Glory. So glory. you have to you have to yield to the fruit. And the fruit, if Christ is really living in you, you're going to produce the fruit. Can't help it. And God's going to make sure if you are truly his child, you will. You will. You will. You heard of that candy called now, later? <laughs> Amen. So now. the sooner you do it, the better. But you will, if not sooner, later. If God knew you before the foundation of the world was created. Amen? Amen. A hard head makes a soft butt. Pam, if you could read for us 1 John chapter 4, verse 2 for us, please. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Amen. Yet Jesus is... God, hallelujah. Amen. 
glory. Thus God being the initiator of forgiveness. We are not. God, I decide I want to be forgiven. Forgive me. No. God said, I knew you even before the foundation of the world was created. He knew you even before you was born. He knew those who will love him. So he made a way because of who he is. He is who he is. He's God and God is love. So he made a way for the lost to come back to him. Those that he knew would love him in spite of ourselves. Amen. Amen. It is because of this forgiving being that we are able partakers with God. God is a forgiving being. He's a, he's a spirit. Amen. I don't even know if being is the right word. Amen. But you guys, y'all know where I'm coming from. Praise God. So we must be initiators by free will to imitate God. You can't imitate God unless you are of God. Okay? And you have to choose that on your own. He already made a way. So, able to forgive without it mattering who is at fault. Can you do that? And if you can't do it, but then you're growing towards being able to do that. Amen, pal? Amen. Just remain in the word. Just hold on. Keep holding on. Are you still yet holding on? Just keep holding on. The Christian life is a process. Amen. Amen. Keep your faith. Amen. Don't lose your faith. Don't lose your faith. Because here's the thing. When you lose your faith, you find yourself doing everything that the flesh want you to do. And you know you're wrong. It ain't no way in hell that you cannot know what you're doing is wrong. Anyhow, so we must have a renewing of the mind and be able to remove ourselves from formal things. Ephesians chapter 4, Pam, can you read that for us? Verse 22, 23, 24, and yes, some people are sick in the head, but when you're touched by God, hallelujah, he still is a miracle worker. Praise God. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, oh, I'm finished. Praise God. Yeah. Go ahead, pal. Go ahead. <laughs> you started. Go ahead. Keep going. Um, verse 25. Wherefore, put in away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Amen. You keep going, baby. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Amen. And pal, if you can for us, say a quick prayer right fast. And so next week, guys, we are going to be talking about the sovereign of God. Isaiah 46 verses 9 and 10. Amen. Father God, we just come before you thanking you for allowing us this opportunity to glorify you in a way through speaking to your believers and those that are not about your word. We thank you in advance for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, we love you. Keep the faith. Be good. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. And we'll see you next week here on the Tabernacle Trinity Hall where our favorite night of the B is where we can say to you that you, you are, are so, so beautiful. beautiful. God bless you. God bless. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. Yeah.